Good morning. Welcome. It is a, whether you are being hurt. Hmm. Should be eating. Let me check the setting and I will. Testing. All right. Let's now that okay. testing one. helps if you turn on all of the buttons. So let's start again. Good morning. And welcome. Whether you are here in person, in the parking lot, or on Zoom, it is good to be together in worship of our Lord and Savior, and in fellowship in sharing with one another. 
Just a uh, brief word about Zoom communion. If you are on Zoom with us today, we do invite you to uh, join with us in sharing communion. It may be late notice, but if you would like to, uh, to do so, you are invited to perhaps gather a uh, cracker or some bread, uh, wine or grape juice. And then as we here uh, carry out the communion, you are welcome to do so as ho at home as well. We are gathered this morning for a number of reasons. We are gathered to give thanks to God for the gift of Linda, to Linda's family, to us, and to our world, and for all of the blessings that she was and is. We are gathered as well, both now and in the fellowship time to follow, to share our grief, our laughter, maybe even our tears with one another. For a time such as this, it is good to be together as people of faith, as people of God, to bring comfort to one another and strength. And we are here as well to hear again the promises of new life, one for us through our Lord's victory over sin and death on the cross. For however many times we may have heard those words before, at times such as this, it is good to hear them again, that our hope may not be lost, and that we may be strengthened in our journey. Let's take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship.
Will those who are able please rise? Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Linda McCoy, to give thanks for her life, to com commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. The Lord be with you. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, those who die in the Lord still live with you in joy and blessedness. We give you heartfelt thanks for the grace you have bestowed upon your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. May we, with all who have died in the true faith, have perfect fulfillment and joy in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
A reading from Isaiah, the 12th chapter. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud, sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 84 responsively. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. The second reading comes from the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Well, those who are able, please rise as together we speak the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Okay. 
The Gospel reading for our service today is from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John. Glory to you. Jesus said to those gathered, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while, and you will no longer see me? And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. They said, What does he mean by this, A little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said a little while, and you will no longer see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you during this time of loss, through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father, and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A little while. That is all the time that St. Andrew members and friends had to know and spend time with Linda. I understand that Linda came out here from, that when Linda came out here from the Northwest, it was going to be for just a little while, just a, a few weeks to pr provide some support and care to Chuck after he was hospitalized. My memory was right, that was just about a year ago. Not only did Linda not return back west, but she soon became a regular participant here at St. Andrew, soon was welcoming, was volunteering as an usher, and welcoming others into worship. Soon was involved with our Thursday Knitters Group, and in other ways in our congregation. A little while, not nearly long enough. I have no doubt that Chuck and all of Linda's family feel this even more so. Yes, they had a lifetime with Linda, adventures shared, joys and struggles, arguments and reunions, but still not nearly enough time. I have found that the if-onlys and the what-should-have-beens are terribly hurtful and destruction, destructive at times like this. If only Linda would have gone to the doctor sooner. Or if only one of us had reached out a little quicker. Oh, all the dreams incomplete, 
the hopes never to be fulfilled. I will share with you that as her pastor, I was so thrilled to have Linda's gifts and energy be a part of this congregation and was so looking forward to working with her in the time ahead. If only. As Chuck and I talked in preparation for today's service, he shared with me that Linda's middle name was Joy. And that was not only the way she lived her life, but was also part of her mission to bring joy into the lives of those around her. The scripture that Chuck felt most strongly about was our second reading about Tabitha or Dorcas, depending on whether you were Greek or Hebrew. Luke records that Tabitha was devoted to good works and to acts of charity. It was a gift as Chuck and I talked to hear just a few of the many stories of Linda's care of family and neighbors. Her devotion to good works and the kindness to others. Chuck also shared some of the family's history and heritage as members of the Clinkett people of the Northwest, the people of the times. Within my understanding, at least, Linda's place in the Klingit community was as the caregiver, the one people turned to in time of need. In an anglicized tradition, something like the seneschal or steward of a medieval castle, whose purpose was to see that all who came there were tended to. What a gift God gave to our world, to Chuck's family, and to St. Andrew in Linda. No, the time was not long enough, and there were still many hopes and plans and dreams still to come, but we can give thanks to God for the time we did have and the blessing she provided to so many. In our gospel reading today, Jesus also shares with the disciples that as people of faith, we know that grief and pain is a part of life. But that too is only for a little while. Yes, in the midst of loss and grief, it can feel like forever. And the absence of a loved one is hard to bear. But compared to the eternity of joy and peace that our loving God has prepared for us, that Linda now knows in all of its fullness, even the longest of lives on earth is but an eye blink. When that time comes when all of us are reunited with those saints who have gone before, then our hearts, like Linda's now, will rejoice and no one will take our joy from us. This is Christ's promise to the disciples, to Linda, and to us who walk as yet by faith 
in a world of both great beauty and great struggle. Let us find our comfort and our strength in God's promise and presence and in the unity we share with one another as people of God. Amen. If you haven't already picked up on this from our music so far, Linda had a deep love of gospel music. And so our thanks to Debbie and our music leaders for honoring that today. Living together in trust and hope, let us proclaim our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and to walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, grant us grace to entrust Linda to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into your arms of mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. God of mercy, God of grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As people of God, we have received God's gift of peace peace that goes beyond the world's understanding. Having received that peace, we are enabled to share that with one another and with the world. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Keeping in mind the need to remain distanced and safe, please exchange a sign of God's peace with one another, with horns in our parking lot and with chat on Zoom.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who rose from the dead into, in whom our hope of resurrection dawns. The sting of death has been removed by the glorious promise of his risen life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you send to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all.
in the parking lot and on Zoom receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ broken and shed for you. Amen. Receive the body of Christ broken for you. Those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Let us commend Linda to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, 
we commend your servant, Linda McCoy. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And now let us go forth in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Thank <laughs> you.